side track is out. What does today's Shanghai and Capella upgrade actually mean for Ethereum price? Are we crashing hard later today? Or is this the launch pad for alt season? But let's first take a look at Bitcoin. Large online is gold. What did you expect guys? We broke out after testing this 28,600 level so many times. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, something like 15 separate days before it finally broke out. Jokes aside, the performance now going into the 6th year of Larsen Line has been uncanny. Isn't it? Of course, since I'm well positioned, I'm very happy to see this breakout. The only concern here is the volume. Technical analysis is just about understanding people. And what I would have liked to see here would be this breakout happening on large volume. Like we saw on this breakout, for example. You see, this volume bar was pretty big. What that means is that someone is buying and someone else is selling every time price goes above that level. Then one day, the buyer has just had enough and just keeps buying no matter how much the other guy throws at him or her and just keeps buying and then price finally goes up and what's left behind is a huge volume candle. Now there wasn't much volume. So what happened? Did the seller who had been selling there for 14-15 individual days just walk away and you come running towards the door and it's open? Or did they take a break, let the guy think it's easy and then later slam down hard? Well, we'll have to see. We did reach this resistance level at 30,300, which was the range support back in 2021. With the trend up as proxied by Lars Online, I will of course favor continuation over reversal. Shanghai Ethereum upgrade planned for later today in a couple of hours as I'm recording this. This is a long awaited major upgrade. It will bring several new features and improvements to the Ethereum network. Most importantly, it will allow validators to withdraw their ETH that has been staked since December 2020. This upgrade was successfully tested on the Guerli network mid-March and will go live on mainnet today. Technically, the hard fork consists of two upgrades. Shanghai on the execution layer and Capella on the consensus layer. In short, Chapella, because they will go live at the same time. To understand the significance of this, we have to go back to 2020. In my last Polygon video, which also talked a lot about Ethereum, we discussed Ethereum scalability issues. It was clear that Ethereum on the proof of work consensus could not handle the thousands of transactions per second that would come from mainstream adoption. And while proof of stake as such does nothing about the scalability, in fact it was three other advantages that Vitalik highlighted easier recovery from attacks and he argued it was more decentralized. But proof of stake could enable other scalability solutions. In December 2020 the proof of stake beacon chain was launched as a first step of Ethereum transition to proof of stake, something which had been half a year away for five years since I started crypto. At that time, that chain ran parallel to the Ethereum proof of work mainnet. And validators in the proof of stake network must lock or stake network tokens for a specific time to become validators and get reward for securing the network and validating transactions. In Ethereum's case, validators had to stake 32 ETH for an unknown period of time. At that time in 2020, it was really a one-way road where validators took the risk to secure the new network without knowing if the network would ever go live. And at that time, it was unclear how long the developers would need to ensure a safe transition to proof of stake, an upgrade that had never been done at this scale before. And until then, the stake tokens could not be withdrawn. Still, back here in 2020, more than 18,000 validators took that risk and staked over 600,000 ETH, which was the threshold to start the validation process of the beacon chain, at that time worth little over $360 million. The development teams kept building on the upgrade for nearly two years so that the proof of stake could take over. Finally, the merge went live in September 2022 without any issues. And that was the point where the new chain took over. In September 2022, over 13.5 million ETH had been staked, or about 10% of all ETH existing 
worth over 20 billion dollars, locked and staked on the Beacon chain, validating the network's transactions from there on. An interesting fact is that the merge was a hard fork, which means that the old chain keeps existing as well. It is miners and validators that decide which chain they keep working on, which is important now that we start talking about if something is a security. It is not Vitalik. And users decide which network they trust and use. So the old Ethereum proof of work chain still exists and you can use it. Even though there is not so much usage compared to the Ethereum proof of stake we're using today. If we forward to today, there are now 18 million ETH or about 15% of the circulating supply worth over 34 billion dollars staked. All those ETH plus their collected staking rewards will be available for withdrawal after the Chapella upgrade is live later today. Price late 2020 was four, five, six hundred dollars. Today it's one thousand eight hundred dollars. Many validators started staking their tokens in 2020. Their ETH are now in good profits. And now those validators will get access to their tokens. So do we expect significant selling pressure on ETH after the upgrade? Let's figure that out. The withdrawal of many funds at the same time would definitely hurt every proof of stake system. Therefore, proof of stake algorithms implement time delays and withdrawal limits to avoid such situations and allow other validators to fill up the withdrawn funds. Chapella will include rules that limit users from withdrawing all staked ETH at once. There will be two types of withdrawals. Partial withdrawals are withdrawals of validator profit. The staking rewards that they earned on top of their 32 ETH stake. Full withdrawals mean that the validator removes his entire balance, including his 32 ETH stake. In this case, the validator would stop participating in the block validation and no longer earns rewards. Withdrawal requests are organized in queues. All partial withdrawal requests are collected in the withdrawal queue and each generated block which happens about every 12 seconds, allows a maximum of 16 withdrawals. So this slows down the withdrawal process to a maximum of about 115,000 daily withdrawals. Full withdrawals come to the exit queue first. The number of exits from the network is limited by the churn limit, which defines how many validators can exit per epoch. And one epoch is 32 blocks. This number depends on the total number of active validators and will decrease as the number of validators goes down. Based on current numbers, 8 validators can exit each epoch, which completes about every 6 to 7 minutes, giving 1800 exits per day. We don't know how much ETH will exit the network over time, but it seems most likely that the staking rewards will be claimed by the validators first. Staking rewards do not give the validator additional voting rights or increase their weight on the network. Currently there's about 1.1 million in ETH in rewards locked on the network distributed over 560,000 validator nodes. So about 20% of these validators, remember max 115,000 daily withdrawals, could withdraw their funds on the first day. If they would want to withdraw all their rewards, we're talking about 220,000 ETH. That would represent about 10% of the daily traded Ethereum volume distributed over the whole day. And that's only if they all sell their ETH. The fact that the validators can withdraw their stakes doesn't mean that all of them will go and sell them immediately. So the market seems big enough to absorb these amounts. Another fact that will prolong the distribution is that the staking provider Lido announced that they will not allow withdrawals before May. Lido is the biggest provider of so-called liquid staking derivatives. Currently they represent about 30% of the staked ETH. There's also in my opinion no reason to believe that many early stakers will flee the network and remove all their stake. According to K33 research about half the staked ETH is in profit. Other ones staked it somewhere up here. And they enjoy a solid 4.5% yield per year. And on top of that they keep supporting the network they already trusted their funds too when it was unclear how long it would take to finish. So some of these people are some die-hard Ethereum fans. 
Many staking providers now also allow staking a smaller amount of ETH. Several EIPs will go live with this upgrade. The withdrawal of funds EIP4895 is the key development for this fork. But there are several other smaller EIPs included as well, aiming to reduce gas fees when the network is in high activity, which can also benefit the ecosystem. The Chappelle upgrade may seem relatively small compared to the merge last September. Still, it has significant impact on validators and is important in improving the network security. The possibility to withdraw funds will increase trust in the proof-of-stake system, kind of opening up the network. Today's upgrade will not improve scalability and transaction cost much. But other upgrades are coming, which could come as early as later this year, 2023, but who knows. They will include the improvements to the EVM, the Ethereum virtual machine, and the long-awaited integration of shards, the EIP4844. We discussed sharding in that Polygon video. Sharding is seen as one of the most significant steps of Ethereum's surge roadmap towards transaction speeds that can reach thousands or even hundreds of thousands of TPS transactions per second. Conclusion. Most people seem to expect a huge dump, and there could come some initial sell pressure, absolutely. But overall, I see more that a huge risk is removed from the Ethereum price chart. And after an initial reaction, I think the effect could be the exact opposite. The great news is that we don't need to predict the future of markets, we just need to react when something actually happens. Right now, Ethereum versus BTC is in this super well-defined range. The actionable event here would be an upside breakout through the top of the range, or perhaps a breakdown confirmation, or a touch on support that holds and reverses. I have only smallish Ethereum exposure today, and that's how I'm going to play this. In a in addition to this big technical event, important economic figures will also come out today, which could impact all markets, Bitcoin and Ethereum included. US CPI numbers are 8.30 Eastern time today, which is 2.30 p.m. Stockholm time, and the Fed meeting minutes are 2 p.m. Eastern time, which is 8 p.m. Stockholm time. My course with Launch Online is still offline, as we take care of previous signups, but I hope to be able to reopen next week. You can email us here if you want to be on the waitlist. Thank you, Tuck. See you all, Arsenal. Hey,